Shark Dropper Studios presents to you. Doppel Avenue Hurt. Case one. Case one. The Silver Casket. Part four. The Frothy Chicken. on, Jim. There was no time to tell her. Carter was crossing the street. Once again, I'd find myself in quite the predicament. Angie, get out of here. Go. Go where? Are you in trouble? Mr. Keys. Fancy seeing you here. And you are? What is this? Nothing. Just some dame on the street. Look, lady, I thought I told you to get out of here. Get out of here? What? I don't understand, Jim. Listen, lady, just scram. Take a long walk off a short bridge. Get out of here. Take the L train. Take a ride at Albuquerque. I don't care. Just leave. Leave? The moose. That's one of Vendel's favorite words. Listen, I don't know what's going on here. Listen, lady, you better go. There's nothing for you here. I don't have time for a quarrel. A quarrel? I think it's a type of bird. What? No. Lady, get lost. Jim, but I don't... Just go. Go. (sighs) Now, Mr. Keys, I'm going to need you to head towards that green building. Of course, Mr. Suck-a-Dick. Yeah, he took the bait all right. Everything was falling in the right order. The green building was fixed with mics and cameras set up by my buddy Paul and his partner Arthur. I would head into the abandoned building and wait for Paul and Arthur to get what they needed to take both Vendel and Carter out of the picture. I looked over at the UPS truck across the street, and that's where both Paul and Arthur were stationed. Paulie Shaw. What is it, King Arthur? You sure Keys is going to be all right? Jimmy Dong, of course he is. He's got guts, and he's been in worse trouble than this. One time in the forest, we busted these two coke dealers, and one of them pulled a knife on me, made like he was going to stab me. You know what Jimmy Dong did? Run away? After that. Cry? After that. Did he hide for a real long, long time? <sighs> After that. What? I don't know. He called me when I was in the hospital, apologized for not helping me. I had gotten stabbed that night, and I was rushed to the ER. He's got guts. I don't know what that really counts, but, you know, all right. Is everything in place? Everything ready? We're ready. They're walking around the back of the building now. I told everyone it's going down exactly like Scarface. Good. Although, I think it would be better sting if we had some actual fucking bees, right? It doesn't go down like that. Plus, it's too hard to work with bees. They're loud, finicky, and sometimes the honey sucks. Fine. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Shh, they've reached the door. Go ahead, through the side door. We walked into the storage room filled with empty shelves and crates. Vendel stood in the far corner in front of a cracked frosted window. Well, Mr. Keys, we tell you we don't want to see you again. You have survived all torture devices, but this is end for you now. I have gun, I have bullet. Bullet with name on it. Your name. You bastard! You're going to kill me, right? That's right. Because you don't want me helping Terrence O'Reilly. Nah. 
And you already tortured me. What is this? You bumped your head or something? Why we recap? I just wanted to get it all straight and all on... Tape! Tape? What tape? What is this tape you speak of? You hear that, you son of a bitch? That sound is our men coming to get you and Carter. You have conned us? Well, it's more like a sting, I think. Bees? You have bees? No, not that kind of... No. Where are these bees? (laughs) They're probably in his pockets. That's where I always keep bees. No, there are no bees. At that moment, Vendel raised his gun, pointing it at my forehead. Hey, you call me bastards. How about you do me a favor and you open up this fucking door right now and I won't shove my foot so far up your fucking ass. Who is it? Who is outside? What do you think it is, buttfuck? It's the police. The band is up there? That's the kind of sting? So lonely? King of pain? Message in a bottle? Rockstar! I was always keen to every breath you take. No, you fucking idiot. It's real police. This is a real sting. Give it up, Vendel. Hey, is uh, someone singing the police in there? It's too late for you. Yeah, who the fuck am I gonna give you? Damn it. Damn it, you fucking open? Oh, shit. Oh, the fucking door open. Hey, uh, Jimmy John? The door is locked. Jimmy John? If you're still alive, can you open the door? Oh, and tell the two bad guys that they're under arrest. Ah, oh, shit, Paul. Oh. <laughs> uh, fuck. Ah. Uh. So, Vendo, it looks like you and Carter are under arrest. Ha 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 ha! Oh, it's too late for us, Keys? Looks like it may be too late for you. Ha 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 ha! Say goodbye! Why don't you go ahead and drop that gun, buttfuck? Or I swear to God, the next one's going right between your eyes. Out of the small, dark hallway strode Angela with a small handgun pointing at Vendel's back. Carter instantly put his hands up, dropping his gun to the floor. See, that man listens. And you should too. Who are you? She's a pistol, that one, Vendel. I'd do what she says. Thanks for your, uh, cooperation. Hey, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on in there, but can someone get the door? I got it. Thanks, Jimmy John. Hey, Big Jimbo, you doing all right? Really? You couldn't get through a fucking locked door? You didn't plan for that? Hey, 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 who? Who's this cutie? Well, this here, this is... Miss Angela Diamond. She saved me, actually. I would like her to save me, too. Save me a piece of that ass. Paul, the bad guys? Right. Vendel, you are under arrest, and Carter, you are gone. Where'd he go? He must have headed down that hall, towards that back door. That's how I got in. Shit. Okay, Arthur, you and Angela stay here. Make sure Vandal doesn't go anywhere. Jimmy John, you're with me. Oh, oh all right. Paul and I rushed down the hallway and through the back door and onto the urban street. That's when I saw Carter. There, right there, Paul. He's heading into the park. Oh, shit. I hate parks. What? Why? Because parks is an anagram for spark, and I had a traumatic experience with electricity when I was young. Well, I mean, it's only one park. It's singular. Oh, yeah, and Park isn't an anagram for anything. Except carp. Oh, shit, I hate fish. But wait, isn't carp spelled with a C? <gasps> ah, let's get him. We ran into the park, past the seesaw of the water fountain in the lake. We weren't getting any closer. Carter was fast. I would say he was a marathon runner if I wasn't so slow. He was about to exit the park when he randomly hit something hanging from a tree. 
he toppled to the ground. What the hell did he hit? I don't know. Whew. Oh, fuck, it's fast. Whew. He's out cold. Oh my god, he hit a beehive. Oh my god, what are the odds? Pretty good, since it, you know, happened. Well, it looks like he tried running away from one sting and ended up with another. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> now let's pick this bastard up and take him in. Be careful, don't get any of the honey on you. It sucks. Hey, don't you mean be careful? What? It's a pun. That was a bit of a stretch, Jimmy John. Let's just go. Right. We knocked the beehive off of Carter and carried his limp body back to the UPS truck. Paul called it in and the squad cars arrived soon after. Paul told me he was going to take them in for questioning and that he would inform me of everything he could get out of them. Angela hung around the whole time, so I thought it was only proper to walk the dame home. I want to thank you. If it wasn't for you, I might not be here. Probably not. He would have shot you in the face. You can't live without that handsome face. Tell that to my Uncle Harry. He was born without a face. He had to eat with his butt. The weird thing is, is he also had to smell, hear, and see through the butt, too. That doesn't make any sense. Well, he was built like an ox. That does not make it any clearer. Anyways, thank you for everything. I had no idea you wanted a gun. I thought you told me this area was unsafe. I did, but I... I guess I never took you for that kind of broad. Oh, I got plenty of secrets, Jim. There was just something about her. I don't know whether it was her flowing blonde hair, the way she walked, or the way she talked. But there was something about her that just gave me... the biggest boner. Normally, I'd be fine, but today I wore my thin pants. I needed to head out before she noticed. Luckily, we arrived at her house just in time. Well, thanks again, but I guess I should be heading back to the office now. Actually, would you care to come in? Angelo, what about your husband? Well, he would care if you came in. No, I meant... Well, do you really think this would be wise? It would just be a cup of coffee. Damn it. I was hoping she'd offer me sex. But hey, I can go for some coffee too. So, I took her offer. The condo was extravagant, bigger than I expected, but she did live on Doppel Avenue, so it made sense. Doppel Avenue was for the rich, and the rich at heart. The living room was larger than my entire apartment. Hardwood flooring, long flowing drapes, custom bar, a chandelier. This place screamed money. Please, have a seat. How would you like your coffee? Black. Two cubes of sugar, a little bit of cream. All right. I'd been walking hunched over the whole way up the stairs, trying to hide the tent that I'd pitched. I quickly sat in the love seat and crossed my legs. Did she notice? I hope not. Angela walked into the kitchen. I couldn't tell if she was flirting with me. She came back out of the kitchen with two mugs of coffee. Jim, I'm all wet. Flirting, definitely flirting. That's flirting. Whew. <clears throat> Is that so? Yes, I spilled some coffee on my blouse. Oh. Here you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Well, maybe she wasn't flirting, but she sat right next to me, her leg touching mine. There was a whole other couch, but she chose to sit next to me. Jim, have you ever seen Top Gun? Yes, actually, I have. What about nine and a half weeks? Huh, I knew what she was getting at now. Top Gun, nine and a half weeks. If there's one thing those movies had in common, it was hot, steamy lovemaking. Yes, actually, I've seen both of them. My favorite scenes are the ones where they start playing that Do you that think new... Mickey Rourke and Tom Cruise look alike? What? No. One guy was the wrestler, the other guy was fucking, you know, cocktails and shit. He's the sexiest man alive. See, that's what I told my friend, and for some reason, she thinks they look similar. Well, that did it. She definitely wasn't coming on to me. The tenant flattened out. 
Very well. I shouldn't get involved anyway. Jim? Yes? Let's have hot, wild, back-breaking sex right now. Well, there was no misreading that. Um, what? Don't you remember those days of senior year? Yeah. And I gotta say, seeing you again has brought back some memories. Then let's do it. <sighs> Angela, wait, we can't. Why? It's actually a rule of mine not to sleep with clients. It sort of complicates things. Well, that's very bold of you. First of all, I'm not gonna have sex with you to get back at your husband. Second of all, what if he comes home, sees me leaving the building all disheveled? And third of all, I don't have a condom. Well, what if I was to say, I don't want you as my PI for the day, and I'm not doing this to get back at my husband. Also, there's a back door you could leave through, and I have plenty of condoms. Well then, Angela, let's have some sex. What the hell was I doing? She was a married woman, a client. I've always told myself to stay out of the situations like this. Ugh, maybe I should stop. We had already moved to our bed and were undressing. That's it. We had to stop. But then I saw her, completely nude. The sun seeping through the curtains, giving her a glorious gold glow. Screw it. Let's do this. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. 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 The fun lasted nearly two hours. I didn't know I still had it in me. It had been a while since I'd been intimate with some dame. Well, that was fun. Where did you learn those moves? Bought a weird book from a street vendor in Thailand. When I visited Thailand several years ago, I bought a sex book entitled Sex, Get It Done. It had all kinds of spectacular sex moves. The roundabout, the upside down mantis, the soup bowl, and my favorite, the frothy chicken. Well, that was one wild ride. Angela curled up into my arms and we laid there resting. I was about to fall asleep when I heard the door open. Honey, it's your husband and I'm home early today. Oh, shit. It looks like the frothy chicken has got James Keyes in quite the position, as one might say. Will he be able to pull out in time, or will he be caught and forced to take the walk of shame? It's a bona fide pickle if he asks this announcer. So find out what happens on the next episode of Doppel Avenue Hurt. Doppel Avenue Hurt, written by Robert M. Lamb. Edited by Jonathan Moss. Starring Kyle Appleyard, Anita LaRose, Amy Laurie, Jose Carabello, Dan Johnson, Jonathan Moss, Adam Jetmore, Amber Simpson, and Shannon McCarthy, with featuring voices by Robert M. Lamb, John Lazaboff, Nick Engelhard, Justin Stewart, Mike and Heather Linhart, Jesse Levine, Nicole Green, Shannon Lee, and Michelle Birmingham. Visit www.sharkdropper.com to hear our other podcasts. Horror Play, the search for the scariest video game ever made. Word of the Bay, a Tampa Bay-based sports podcast. And the Shark Dropper podcast, where we talk random stuff with a mixture of improv. Also, we have an upcoming Academy Awards podcast titled Snubbed, where we rate each year's best motion picture nominees.